Welcome to this week's episode of Sports Central. I'm Cam Goodekunst. CMU Golf turned some heads at the Mac Fall Preview in Noblesville, Indiana, placing third in the team competition behind Xavier and Toledo. The team's score of 901 is a program record. Yeah, a couple big D commits so far, like you said, from Cast Tech. Kyra McKinney Harper and Armando Dingle both decided to take a step back and decommit for the time being as National Sign Day approaches. Both still looking at the Chippewas, both in their decommitment notes, both said they were very interested, but going to see where the program heads and who's the next leader here. But with that being said, still 18 players committed for the Chippewas as National Sign Day approaches. Roman, your thoughts on one or two of the biggest names that are going to be potentially signing with Central Michigan soon? It seems like the talk of the college football offseason has been the transfer portal, where players can submit their name to find potential suitors in the hopes of finding a new home. Central Michigan, with its coaching change this offseason, is no stranger to the portal themselves. Standout defensive end Mike Dana submitted his name to the portal, and after some speculation on if he would leave or not, we finally have the answer. Dana won't be leaving the state of Michigan, but he will be leaving Mount Pleasant as he is transferring to the University of Michigan next year. Yeah, absolutely, Roman. You look at those two different players, and that's a special duo right there. Out of those six Sunshine State players, you take Cameron Vaughn, you set at six foot six, 300 pounds for a high school senior. He is a massive talent, and he's a guy who already had an offer from Central Florida. He had some SEC offers, such as South Carolina, and the only thing you really see about him is he's a little raw as far as you know speed and that dynamic aspect is really concerned, but I hate to break it to everyone, if he was a guy who was running a sub 640, he'd probably be playing at SEC school, so that's a very big pull for Jim McElwain, and if you work on him a little bit, could be a future stud for this Chippewa program. And then you said Daniel Richardson, and you can pull a kid who played for Miami Carroll City, uh, arguably top 25, if not top 30 program in the whole country, not even just in Florida. You have an elite talent who has an elite pedigree, and he also had some pretty big offers as well. The Chippewa men's basketball team took on Chicago State for their second game of the season. CMU would start out hot and never look back. The Chippewa shot 58% from the field in the first half, giving them a 61-32 lead entering halftime. Larry Austin would lead Central with 17 points, 9 assists, and 4 rebounds. Matt Beachler added 16 points off the bench, along with Romello Burrell, who tacked on another 11 for the Chips. Welcome back to Sports Central. With the baseball and softball seasons just getting underway, we're joined at the desk with play-by-play -play and color commentator for the Chippewa baseball and softball teams, Riley Edwards. Riley, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Brand new sports season's up here in the spring, and why not start with baseball and the new head coach, Jordan Bischel. Riley, your initial thoughts on what we can expect from Coach Bischel here in this first season. Yeah, Joe, I have to really agree with you here. It is time to be at least a little bit panicked so far, but it's far from over. You've only played one of your eight slated conference games on the year, and you took a tough loss to NIU. Looking at that, that was the debut for Tommy Lazaro. He came in mid-third quarter. The Chippewas trail 21-3 when he comes in, and Two straight touchdown drives, he leads the Chippewas down to a quick three and out after a couple sacks, and then he got him all the way down in the red zone, and then there was that last second interception that really sealed the deal for the Husky. So first off, for me, for leaders for next year, there's one huge name I look at the stat sheet, and that's Jonathan Ward, our running back. And he had just under 1,500 yards last year and 13 touchdowns between receiving and rushing, and the man was just a workhorse for us. So I definitely think he's going to pick up the slack, especially in a spread offense, and I think he's going to be a dominant player and a leader for this Chippewa team. Basketball is officially back here at CMU, and on this episode of Sports Central, we'll take a look at how the men's and women's teams started off their seasons. We also take a look at club and high school hockey, so stay tuned because Sports Central starts right, right now. now. Your journey with the sport of basketball, what first got you interested in it, and what's that journey been like for you guys? I can go first. Go um, so basically when I was younger, uh, my dad was a basketball coach, so just kind of when I was younger, probably like, when I could start walking, I got involved in basketball because my brothers played it and then they kind of got me into it and then I just kind of fell in love, love with it when I was in middle school and I was like, I really want to play in college. So I worked as hard as I could to get there and then now I want to um, play professionally and go as long as I can. Absolutely, and for you, Reyna? I started playing in fourth grade. I didn't like it when I was really little, but my older brother and sister played in the league in Saginaw, and my parents asked me if I wanted to play. So I tried it, and I loved it right away, and I just really got into it and just kept getting better. And I know, Preston, you mentioned your dad is a big influencer. Is there any other influencers that really drove you to get to the point you are here today? Uh, I'd probably say one, my older brother. He's okay. um, pushed me a lot, too, as well, in the gym and stuff like that, and helped me um, build my work ethic. And then, yeah, my dad is a big influencer as well. And then for you, Reyna? 
For me, I think that my parents really taught me how to work hard and how to get better and improve. And I really worked my family. My family's a big motivation for me. And I have two younger siblings, so I really want to show them that anything's possible. And I really hope that I'm a good role model for them. Awesome. And then a lot of different things that happened along the way, all the way till you get here to Central Michigan. What was the big impact that made you choose the Chippewas over any other opportunities you had along the way? Uh, I would say the, I'd probably say Coach G. Um, just the way that her, she's built all her programs every year and improved. And um, she's just such a good communicator and cares about you as a person. And then the rest of the coaching staff as well. And then like when I came here, it just felt like home. And then like the, she literally came in, into my house and just kind of had din dinner with us and my family. And then I just felt comfortable. And from then, then on, I was like, I really want to go to Central. Yeah, and then for me, I mean, obviously the coaching staff was great and everything, and they care about you athletically and academically, so that was a big part for me. And my hometown's only an hour away, so I could still be close with my family. And my brother was on the practice team for a little while because he went to school here, and he really knew like how practices were ran and stuff, and he thought it would be a good fit for me. So I was just really comfortable with coming here. Definitely. You mentioned a close relationship with your family. You two obviously have a very close relationship off the court. How has it impacted how you guys have been able to play on the court the last few years? I think it's really helpful because we know how each other play and it's, um, we know like, I know what she's going to do, like if she's going to pass me the ball or something, I'm always ready for it and just knowing how each other plays and having that chemistry between a point guard and a post player is really special. Yeah, it just helps on and off the court. Um, we can kind of learn from each other, watch film together and stuff like that and see um, and work out together and kind of build that chemistry as well. And you mentioned the impact of Coach G prior to coming here as a Chippewa. What's it been like to play for Coach G the last few years? Um, it's been amazing. Um, it's going to be hard not to play for her anymore, but um, it's just amazing four years. I've learned a lot from her, and I've just been able to soak in all the knowledge I could from her. Yeah, she's a really passionate coach, and she cares about you on the court and off the court, and she really knows what you need to do to get better and improve your game and everything. So being able to learn from her over the past four years is something that I can't, or I took advantage of. I know this could be a tough question, but one, if not even a couple of your favorite moments here as a Chippewa over the last few years. I'd probably say um, making, making it to the Sweet 16. Um, that is just amazing feeling. Like, I don't think I'd be able to describe that feeling against Ohio State when getting into the Sweet 16. And then um, just kind of the whole senior year, um, just being able to play with everybody kind of for the last time and being able to just put everything out on the floor that we've been working for our whole four years. Yeah, the Sweet 16 game is a game I'll never forget. And when we got our rings, our first game of the season here, that was really cool. And then I think our senior night, that was really special because the community came out and supported us three. And that was just really cool to have them just come out and cheer for us for our last game in McGurk. Definitely. Presley, this one's a little more specific to you. The three-point competition lately, you got to compete against the best male and female three-point shooters across all the country, and you came out victorious, actually the best in competition history. What was the process like leading up to that and the night of winning that whole competition? Uh, well, before like I would work out and stuff, uh, I would like get the racks out and shoot and stuff with my managers and coaches and stuff like that. They had rebound for me, so when I got there, I knew I was ready. I knew I'd do pretty well, and I was confident in myself. And then um, when I came, I was just kind of calm and confident and was not trying to get like too nervous because the crowd was obviously, the crowd was huge and it was just Definitely. awesome to play in front of that. And then Raina, for you, you're only a player in program history with 1,500 rebounds and 1,500 points. What's it mean to hit those two feats and be the only one ever to do that here for CMU? Yeah, I think that was really cool. The rebounding part was really special to me because that's the goal I set from freshman year and that's what I'm really good at. And I was really able to elevate my game this season. So to see my hard work pay off was really cool. And then you kept the tradition alive that your teammate Tanara Moore started. You're a repeat All-American for CMU and then you became a back-to-back -back MAC Player of the Year. Well, Tanara did it and then you got to do it this season. What does that mean for you to live up to that legacy and keep that alive for Central Michigan? Yeah, that was really cool because coming in, Tanara um, really was took me under her wing and helped me learn things from her and helped me offensively too because I came in and she was a lot stronger than me and she knew how to play better in the post. So she really taught me and last year she was really helping me on and off the floor and just telling me what I need to do to get better and it was really cool that I could accomplish what she did too.
And then Presley this year, you got to become the all-time women's basketball leader in, pro in points, and then also got to exceed to the number one basketball player in points scored for male or female for Central Michigan. What was that like for you? I mean, what's it like to be the best all-time player offensively here for Central Michigan? Um, it's really cool, but I wouldn't have been able to do it without my coaches and my teammates. Um, it's just amazing. I was That was one of the goals that I set for myself coming in, and um, it's just amazing that I was able to accomplish that. And then WNBA draft here tonight. What is that like for you guys? I mean, what has the anticipation been like for you guys? And what are you thinking going into this tonight? Um, just kind of not getting like your hopes up, but just kind of staying like whatever happened happens for a reason. Because um, God has a path for us and he's going to put us where he thinks is best for us and best fits us. So we're just going to see what happens and go from there. Yeah, we're not trying to read into it too much, but you know, we're just going to hang out and watch the draft together and just see what happens. And if not, we'll get into a training camp or go overseas. So whatever's supposed to happen will happen. Definitely. And beyond the draft here tonight, what are some other goals you look to do, whether it's with basketball or just in a normal career? What would you like to do beyond the sport of basketball when your playing days are over? Uh, I want to be a college coach, um, hopefully Division One. I. Uh, I think it'd be really cool to play for um, Coach Heather. Um, I've been really close and built a relationship with her over these past four years. And um, yeah, I, thought, I think it would be really awesome if I'd be able to play, or not play, but be an assistant coach for her one day. Uh, I have a lot of different things in mind that I'm not really sure of what I want to do, but you know, I've thought about going back to school or getting into research or go, even going into coaching. So it's just um, a decision I'll make when I'm done playing and whatever opportunity comes up. Well, definitely. I want to wish you guys both good luck here tonight with the draft coming up, and thank you for both for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.